Hey everyone, welcome back to the graph series. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the graph terminologies that are really very important in order to understand the whole graph theory and in order to understand the algorithms and implement those algorithms associated to graphs. So without any further delay, let's just start. So let's just start with the first terminology that is multigraph. We have already seen some different type of graph that is undirected graph, directed graph, weighted graph, unweighted graph. Now these are some more different type of graphs and some more terminologies associated with them. So what is a multigraph? A multigraph is an undirected graph in which multiple edges are allowed between any two vertices and even loops. So I should write multiple edges and loops are also allowed. So here you can see we can have a self loop like what is a self loop? A vertex is pointing towards itself. Right. And multiple edges, then I mean is between two vertices, there can be multiple edges. Right. So this is a typical representation of a multigraph. Whereas just opposite of it is a simple graph. What is a simple graph? It's an undirected graph in which both multiple edges like these and loops like this are not allowed. So just say, this is very simple. Simple graphs are plain graphs, plain undirected graphs. Two vertices are going to have only one edge, right? And self loops are not allowed. Whereas in multi multi graph, there can be multiple edges and self loops, right? Okay. Now, what's a complete graph? A graph in which every vertex is directly connected to every other vertex. When I say directly connected to every other vertex, is every vertex is going to have every other vertex as its adjacent because there will be an edge present between every two vertex. Right. So here you can see if you take these two, there is an edge. 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 Right. So every two vertices are going to have an edge between them. Right. Okay. What's a connected graph? Now a connected graph says that it is going to have a path from every vertex to all other vertex. Now when we say the word path, then we don't mean that we are going to have a direct edge. That means that from starting from one vertex, we can go to any other vertex and there will be some path which will which may or may not involve more vertices. For example, let's say if you want to start with this particular node and you want to go to this node, then you can go here, then you can go here and then you can go here. Right. So there will be a path between any two nodes. That's a connected graph. What's a disconnected graph? How about if we have a few more component like let's say this is also the part of the graph. But this part is different than this part. So from this vertex, you can never reach any of these vertices. Right. So it's a disconnected graph. Okay. Now what's a path? A path PN is also a type of a graph whose vertices can be arranged in a sequence V1 to Vn such that the edge set, the set of edges are of the form Vi, Vi plus 1. So here you can see V1, V2 is having an edge. V2, V3 is having an edge. V3, V4 is having an edge. So right. So if you have a graph where the vertices can be arranged such that the edge set is going to be of v, Vi, Vi plus 1 for all i that belongs to the range 1 to n minus 1 or 1 to n I should say. Right. 1 to let's say uh, oh, sorry 1 to n minus 1. Only. Yeah. So 1 to n minus 1 if all of these are going to be there then in that case we are going to say it's a path. Right. So you will see that a lot of people will be using the term path like we also use that here that path from every vertex there should be uh, there should be some part to every other vertex. So you can say that part can be path can be a part of any other graph also. Right? It can be a sub graph to another graph also. Okay. Now what's a cycle? A cycle CN is a graph whose vertices can be arranged in a cyclic sequence where the vertices are these such that the edge set is VI to VI plus 1 union v1 vn right so it will be kind of forming a path but v1 and vn are also going to be connected to with an edge so let's say this was a path coming up and then these two edges these two vertices also got engaged with each other via an edge so it will form a cycle and a cycle can be part of other graphs also this can be a subgraph of other graph also for example if let's say you consider this graph so here you can see this is a cycle C1, this is also a cycle C2. There are two cycle in this uh, this graph, right? So cycle can be a part of another graph and you will see people using the term cycle 
as a terminology which mentions the fact that whether your graph is having a subgraph which is a cycle or not or which is having a cycle or not okay now what's a directed acyclic graph now you know what's a cycle right that means you know what is a cyclic graph a graph which is going to have a subgraph that contains a cycle what's an acyclic graph a graph which is not going to contain any cycle and what's a directed graph that means every edge is going to have an have a direction so a directed acyclic acyclic graph is something like this where there will be edges which are having directions and there won't be any cycle for example this is not a dag this is not a dag why because this is forming a cycle this is forming a cycle so this is not a dag right okay now we have a term called as degree we have a term called as degree degree is a term associated with a vertex so degree of a vertex in a graph is the total number of edges incident to it when we say incident then we are talking about directed graphs but for n directed graph instead of incident you should say the number of edges associated with it for n directed graph for example here you can see for this particular vertex there are two edges which are involved with the corresponding vertex so it is going to have a degree 2 for this particular vertex you can see there are three edges which are associated with the vertex so that in, so that degree will be 3 right now this was for undirected graph now when you talk about directed graphs then this degree has a more wider i would say meaning this degree then converts to in degree and out degree there are now two more terminologies that comes up so in a directed graph the out degree of a vertex is total number of outgoing edges for example if let's say you have this vertex and there are three edges going like this so the out degree of this vertex is 3 whereas in degree is the total number of incoming edges now from some other vertices there will be let's say these two edges coming up so the in degree of this particular vertex is 2 right that's why i say incident on it right that's why i say incident on it for the degree right so in an undirected graph we are going to have a degree for a directed graph we are going to have in degree and out degree specifically right in degree means that the total number of edges coming towards the vertex or incoming towards the vertex and what is out degree the number of edges going outwards of the vertex or going out from the vertex right so this is the degree of the corresponding graph now there are few more types such as tree now tree is something that you are going to listen a lot of times in your data structures and algorithmic journey right so what's a tree so by definition tree is a connected graph now first of all it's a connected graph that means every node is going to have some path to other node okay with no cycles there won't be any cycle right so if let's say if we remove all the cycles from a dag we will get a tree so if let's say you have a directed acyclic graph right you can get a tree if you are going to uh, uh, this should be like directed acyclic graph already does is not having uh, is not going to have a cycle right so instead of directed acyclic graph let's say we should say from any graph from a graph right from a graph we will get a tree okay now there is one more terminology forest right so if you are given a tree and you remove any one edge even any one edge from the tree you can remove many, uh, more also but if even if you remove just one edge then it is going to called as a forest right so here you can see this is a tree there is no cycle here but if let's say you are going to remove this edge let's say we remove this edge we remove this edge now this is a forest so you can say forest is a collection of multiple trees forest is a collection of multiple trees so formally defining forest forest are undirected graphs where any two vertices are connected by at most one path when we say at most one path then there can be either zero path or one path so for example this node and this node is connected by one path but this node and this node are not connected by any path so there can be either one path or no path that that's why we are saying for any two pair of vertices we can have at most one path so that's a forest right okay 
Now we have seen few more types of graphs and some terminologies. Now we can also see some relationship between the number of edges and number of vertices for different kind of graphs. So let's say if you have a directed graph, if you have a directed graph, then maximum what can happen? The maximum what can happen is the number of edges, the number of edges is going to be number of vertices multiplied by number of vertices minus one. Now why it is going to happen like that? Because the reason of this formula you can understand from undirected graphs. So for an undirected graph at max, at max, if you push it towards a complete graph, then it will be equal to VC2 that is number of vertices C2. Why? Because we have let's say V vertices. For every edge, we have to choose just two vertices and put an edge between them. So in how many ways we can choose any two vertices from V set of vertices, I would say VC2. So this will be what V into V minus one by two, right? Now here you can see that if instead of undirected graph, if we will be having directed graph, then every edge is going to have a direction, right? Every edge is going to have a direction. So we have to count it twice. So that's why VC2 into two. Okay. And here you can see that if you have a complete graph, then also uh, you are going to have the number of edges equals to VC2. The max, when, when I say maximum number of edges in an undirected graph, then it means it has become a complete graph. So if for a complete graph, you are going to have VC2 number of edges. Okay. Now for a connected graph, here you can see that you will be having minimum V minus one. You will be having minimum V minus one edges, right? Why? Because if you will be having lesser than V minus one edges, that means you are going to bake a forest and it is now no more. It is now not going to be connected, right? Okay. Similar to that, tree is also a connected graph. So similar thing will happen here, right? And for a forest, for a forest, uh, I would say uh, this should be number of edges is V minus one, right? That is maximum, right? That's why we've written here maximum that we have not removed any edge from the tree, then also it's also a forest. So maximum you can have the number of edges equal to the number of edges in a tree, right? Okay. Now there is one more terminology that we need to define as component, as component, right? So if there is a disconnected graph then the set of vertices which are connected forms a component right for example for example Let's say you are having this kind of a graph, right? I'm just making a rough one. This is also a graph, right? Now this, these four set of vertices are connected among each other. These three set of vertices are connected among each other. So this is one component. Let's say it's component C1. This is one more component C2. So there are two components in this overall graph. Right. So similar to that here also, as you know, a tree is a graph just without cycles. And if you have made it a forest, then we have more than one components. See, we have two components here. So this was the meaning of components of a graph, right? So I hope all of these terminologies are clear to all of you guys, right? We are going to see much more theory and much more practice problems around graph theory in this series. So stay tuned for that. If you guys enjoyed this session, uh, so don't forget to drop a like, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon so that you can get a notification whenever I'm going to put a new video on the channel. And if you have any doubts, don't forget to comment down all of your doubts below. I will try to uh, help as many people as possible. Otherwise, other folks or other peers who are going to learn from the same series can definitely help you. So till then, take care guys. Bye bye. Have a great week ahead and love you all.